Hello and welcome back to The Boardroom, where as always we're having conversations among Malta's business community to find out the topics that are most interesting to them and most important to them. And today we're going to be talking about the startup journey, which is fascinating, how to bring new businesses into the space. And we're going to be meeting with some of the team from RSM to help us understand a little bit more about that. Now we are live on Facebook at the moment, so if you're watching live, feel free to add your comments and your questions below. Hello. If not, you can watch this back on who's who.mt, Malta's leading business portal. Now, it gives me great pleasure to welcome my guests today. They are Vladimiro Comodini. He is a partner Hi. at RSM. Great to have you on the show, Vladimiro. Um, he is joined by Karen Spiteri Bailey. She's also a partner at RSM. Hi, good afternoon. And finally, we have Fabian Ruggier, who's a director at RSM. It's great to have all of you with us today. Thank you, Joe, for the opportunity. It's lovely to see you. And I think we're going to be talking about the startup journey today, a really interesting topic. I know lots of our viewers are interested in startups, how they get involved, what they need to consider. So we've got lots to get through. Um, but first of all, I'd love it if you could just tell me a little bit about you and what it is that you do in the company over at RSM. And Vladimiro, I'll come to you first. Okay. Um, I lead, uh, I'm a partner with, R with an RSM and I lead the NextGen Advisory, which is basically, um, you know, we advise people on all fronts, uh, across all services, uh, and more personally, I focus on, on gaming, compliance, and financing and deals of portion of the advisory. So we'll, we'll delve into detail, more detail of, you know, the services as we go along. Fantastic. Thank you, Vladimiro. Karen? Hi, Joe. So I've been a partner at RSM for the past six and a half years, um, and I lead the uh, what we call the outsourcing department. Mainly, it's the back office, so accounting, um, VAT, payroll. It's a very dynamic um, department where there are a number of people working within the department, and uh, I'm very happy to be one of the partners there. That's lovely, Karen. Thank you for that. And Fabian. Yes, yeah, so uh, Joe, I'm a director at RSM with the advisory service line. Uh, my focus is consulting, so we'll, we work with businesses on their uh, challenges related to growth, so people, processes, technology, and how, how to achieve growth and success. Fantastic. Well, that's certainly something that uh, startup businesses will be um, keen to hear all about, how it is that they achieve the success that they're looking for. And so, Vladimiro, maybe I'll come to you now just for a little bit of insight into RSM itself and, uh, and what it is that you offer, the services that you bring to the table. Yes, um, I would start from, the st from RSM was set up and initially incorporated in 2005. I was one of the founding employees, not a partner at the time. And over the years, uh, we grew organically over the years and we started increasing our services as, as we went by. In, uh, I think, a couple of milestones which are worth men uh, mentioning here is in 2016, we merged with Spiteri Bailey, which was uh, a firm which we saw a lot of potential to, to further grow our businesses. And in 2000, end of 2016, we actually moved to our new offices, which for us, was you know you know making the footprint in in the local context that we are now part of the big big players and throughout this this time we've uh, grown organically and 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 by merger uh, and to, today since the eight employees we started with today we employ close to 180 employees we're very much diversified. Um, Roughly uh, 30, 30, 35 percent of our workforce is is foreign, um, and we're multidisciplinary in the sense of you know we have legal experts, IT experts, accountants, strategists. You know we're we're quite widespread, and we're proud to say that we're a one-stop shop. So we do not farm out any of our services. I think that that brings us uh, you know a summary on RSM in terms of advisory. We're, we're focused on three main areas. Uh, management consulting, which I'll, I'll leave you know, Fabian to, to, to mention and uh, talk more about that. Uh, financing and deals, which is mainly related to mergers, acquisitions, funding for startups and beyond. 
and then governance risk and compliance, which is quite regulatory driven, and to focus on, on, on the various aspects which our clients need from time to time. Very Karen, interesting. You Thank you. Yes, okay. Karen, is there anything you'd like to add? <laughs> yes, so I had the startup, the, sorry, the outsourcing services, so it's the core. The core services of the firm is made up of three major components, namely the accounting, the audit, and the tax. I particularly had the accounting. The accounting is split into three areas. So you have the accounting where we're talking about keeping the books of accounts, issuing management accounts, dealing with clients, and that is done twofold. Either the clients gives us the information and we update from the office or we visit the client's offices, or, um, and it has been happening quite frequently, um, we would fill in some stop gaps, meaning somebody's on long leave, or somebody is on maternity leave, we will get a request, we go to the client and we fill up, we fill up that post for a short period of time. Sometimes um, we do well or um, the client decides that they prefer not to recruit and we end up being there in a longer term position. That's from the accounting point of view. When it comes to the payroll perspective, um, clients would outsource the full payroll function, meaning we would take care of the payroll from beginning to end, issuing the, the pay slips, you know, and obviously finishing off with the employees actually receiving their funds. And then there's the other area um, which involves VAT. Um, we sometimes stuff it as very annoying tax internally, but it's just something to be, you know, to make fun of. Actually, VAT is a very important uh, part of the local legislation. And in that case, we look into both the VAT from a compliance perspective. So we would help our clients to close off um, and file in on time or from an advisory perspective where uh, we actually can help um, solve particular matters uh, and questions that the clients come up with. So that in, sort of like sums up what the outsourcing is all about. Very interesting. I think that a very annoying tax thing could take off. Um, uh, but yes, of yes. course, <laughs> it is also very important. Um, and of course, business strategy is a, is a big part of what you do. Um, it would be great to know a little bit more about what that even means. Um, and maybe Fabian, you could help us understand that. Yes, sure. So when it comes to strategy advice, in essence, what we do is we sit down with the business owners or with the founders in case of startups. We identify what their vision is, what the future direction looks like. We help them do market research because it's very important to assess what the macro realities are, but also what are the projected changes to the environment at a macro level. We take stock of who the organization is to Today, so what are the strengths and what are the weaknesses of the organization today? And we do this, this map building, this future orientation together. This feeds the thinking process. We then help them assess what the options are ahead of them. So the feasibility, the suitability of these options, what that would look like, what type of investment they would need to consider, and from where could that investment arise. And together, we help them shape up this strategic vision and strategic roadmap um, for those organizations that then uh, would want even more support. We also come in with the management advice. So how do we make this a reality? So we help with identifying the, the responsibilities and who will be driving these strategic responsibilities forward, making sure that there are the right people in the right seats that technology is enabling the critical capabilities of this organization and the project management of such a process. So, so it's uh, an, an extremely interesting and challenging process where we bring in different expertise and different backgrounds because it is definitely not a one man or a one woman show uh, building a strategy. Yeah, I'm sure. And uh, there's so much to think about, isn't there? And so much going on. Um, perhaps, Vladimiro, you could help us understand a little bit about what else goes into business strategy. Yes, it's important from, from a strategic point of view, because obviously, as, as Fabian mentioned, the whole market research, where do you want to be for in a, a few years' time? What do you want to be? What differentiates you from, from other uh, your competitors? These all fit, fill into, eventually, the, the, the financial planning side of things, because Obviously, um, reaching where you want to be is, it will define 
what, what initiatives which are, are fed onto costs, and then you need to fund those costs. So all the work that Fabian's team or part of the team developing the market research, competitor analysis, SWOT analysis, etc., feed into the, the financial planning side of things, which then will enable the organization to go to the next step, which usually is linked to funding. How am I going to fund the growth? And there we can tap into um, national incentives, typically you know, from, from government entities which allow and assist uh, organizations in terms of funding, uh, banks, uh, start, um, crowdfunding, um, investor, angel, angel investors, and even then the further on to the market for mature organizations, there's the, the capital markets, which are you know, bond issues and, and prospects. So I think that, that would be the whole life cycle of, you know, from starting from the defining the strategy right into how it hits the business and how it will develop further. Lovely, Vladimir, thank you. And, and sort of speaking about things that have, you know, hit the business, um, uh, when we take a step back at the moment, you know, it's been quite a challenging time for businesses, you know, coming out of the COVID uh, pandemic. Uh, now, of course, it's shortages and it's the Ukraine invasion and it's talent gap and all of that. Um, so what, what is it that RSM can do to help to support um, businesses that perhaps are questioning how to future-proof themselves at the moment? Fabian, is that something you can help us answer? I think, Joe, what we're doing is meeting up uh, with our clients and also, you know, individuals with whom we haven't yet had the pleasure of working. And we are reminding them and we are discussing that strategy is not a once a year or, God forbid, once every two or three year exercise. We believe it is alive. It is a constant leadership activity. Uh, where the monitoring and the calibration then of the strategy and the direction needs to happen depending on how we are reading the environment. And with environment, I am meaning not only, you know, the, the geographical or the physical environment, but in a very wide sense. So how are market preferences changing? How are customer behaviors changing? What are the new opportunities that are arising from these disruptions? And how often are we questioning how we work at the moment and how we will be working tomorrow, you know, and opening ourselves up to asking what if. So, so, so in essence, what we're doing is, is reminding and discussing and trying to explore um, in a lot more practical way, demystifying the, 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 the connotations around strategy and making this a frequent but very important exercise that leaders, management, do together to, to future-proof the, their organizations. Okay, fantastic. Thank you for that insight, Fabian. And um, traditionally, um, the Maltese economy, uh, you know, has been built around family businesses. And sort of over time, we've seen this move now towards startups and scale-ups. Um, um, so how can you, what can you tell us about that and how sort of RSM is, is helping to develop businesses in those areas? And uh, Fabian, I'd love to come back to you for that. Sure. So family businesses are an important segment to us. They represent a very big majority of the Maltese community and the Maltese economy. So it very much depends on who the owners are today uh, what the owners are visualizing as their own personal future, not only their business future. We then look at who else leads this organization and whether there are up and coming generations of the same family that can um, contribute to the future directioning of this business. We also look at whether external professionals can be brought into that organization and strategize the future and take it to the next uh, generations and to the next years. Uh, of course, family businesses are quite delicate. Uh, reason being that when there is family, there are emotions. And these are undercurrents that can complicate uh, what usually, you know, are the formalities of business. So, so what we do with them is, of course, help them manage this transition, help them manage succession, help them visualize what the future can look like. 
build the new governance structures that are needed for an organization to continue on its evolution and to plan how the organization can look like in the future. Um, we do this delicately and sensitively, as I mentioned, because what we've learned is that the harmony in the family is first and foremost, and then the business will flow. So then, you know, the support processes such as estate planning, fiscal and tax planning, governance arrangements, identifying the future leaders, building the organizational structure of tomorrow, those will all follow mm -hmm. as long as the family feels that there is harmony and that the legacy, the past legacy, will prevail and will actually evolve in the future uh, legacy of this business. Brilliant. Brilliant. That's great to hear. And um, Vladimir, do you have any other thoughts on, um, uh, again, how you're sort of helping perhaps the startups and the scale-ups as well? I, I would touch upon, again, um, the, the, the ultimate um, deliverable, let's say, of that, which, as, as Fabian mentioned, has to be an ongoing process, um, regular, not, not you know, once every three, three years or more. Um, and the, the, that all feeds in, I'll tie it again to the financial planning side of things, in the sense that the, the output, the financial output of that will give comfort to the, the family members for, for, you know, for family businesses. But in terms of startups, it's even more profound that it will tell them how can we financially sustain this idea we have to take us to the next step. That, that tool, the output, will feed into either a business plan or a, uh, which goes to the bank for finance or to an investor as an investor deck or an information memorandum further on to, you know, to approach or tease, let's call it this way, the, the investors. And all those you know, tie in together uh, and, and we try uh, and manage to, to put in a do document to feel uh, all, for all parties to feel part of it and, and you know, tie in into one, one uh, deliverable, which will assist the, the company, be it a family business or a startup, to, to grow to the next step, to move to its next phase of the evolution. Absolutely, because it's all about that, isn't it? Getting to the next phase of evolution for the business. But let's take a step back momentarily because we've spoken about startups and how passionate you are about them, but perhaps we haven't fully defined what a startup is. Um, so Fabian, perhaps again, you could give us a bit of insight into that. Yes, we, we define a startup as a fledgling um, business venture, which is in the very, very initial stages of its operation. Typically, it's led by very motivated and intrinsically uh, motivated founder or founders who have a belief, who have a vision that there is a demand out there for the product or service which they have envisioned. Typically, there is the need for more market research to validate the ideas, to validate the, the acceptability of the product and the service in the market. So, so there is a work which we do there on that subject. There is also typically very limited resources. So, so capital is typically uh, very limited, cash strapped. And, you know, we need to see how to make ends meet, how to do the market research, how to get feedback from the market, how to tweak the product or the service, and to better define the business model. So it's very much an exploratory um, journey uh, in the initial days, months, or years of uh, a startup. Okay. Yes. And in fact, I mean, I believe you have a very particular approach, isn't that right, to sort of getting the startup um, from the initial phase where it's all about the idea um, to sort of, you know, the future success that they're going to build. Maybe you could tell me a little bit about that approach, Fabian. Yes, it's an approach that we've built over the past year, year and a half, I would say, that we have been working together across the firm. We've brought together a working group led by the partners and a number of individuals within the teams that believe in this, that are young and fresh and excited themselves. And we bring the multidisciplinary aspect from the start, including um, in this effort. Uh, we start off by being a sounding board to the strategy, to the vision, and to the business model. 
because then we bring this, these disciplines together and we bring it down, we boil it down to, to specific support and specific assistance depending on the journey, the level of maturity that the startup is at. Okay, fantastic. That's a, a great start to understand this brilliant approach that you have. Um, perhaps, Vladimiro, you could um, uh, expand on that for us. Yes, once, uh, once as, uh, as Fabian was mentioning, we defined the, the maturity of the startup and where they want to be and we challenge, we have challenged our business models, their ideas. I think here I, did, I need to make a small parenthesis. Um, you need to balance out the, the young generation, which you know, are, are, have these great ideas, which for us, the older generation, uh, might sound you know, immediately, you know, it won't work. Uh, but we've seen over years that you know un uh, unthinkable ideas actually you know materialized um, and 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 things like so we need to balance out the innovation side of things which would typically come from the younger younger generation and then the uh, the mentoring side which comes from you know experienced people and you need to find the right balance and there is where we I believe we struck the right right uh, balance. In this startup team, where we we balanced out, you know, experienced people, partner. It's partner time, which, as as we all know, in the business community, is sort of the most expensive um, time. But we are dedicating in startup and investing our time to help uh, generate the startup mentality and 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 nurture that that, that this sector, which I think is tomorrow's future. Absolutely. And Karen, what about you? Do you have anything to add on the approach that you take? Yes, yes, actually, because all in all of this, we're talking about people, we're talking about individuals, we're talking about these individuals who are passionate with their ideas and how they would like to move that forward. So a lot of time and patience needs to be dedicated to these people. So there's a lot of listening time. Um, and it is within that listening time that we actually learn about these people, understand where they are coming from, their background, because all of this links into how possible it is for us to continue um, helping them, mentoring them, and um, ultimately getting the idea that they have to fruition, which hopefully becomes a successful uh, company moving on. So the idea is that once the company takes off from a startup, then we'll be able to handhold for the first few years until they, they can then take off alone. So it's very much like, you know, we talk about family businesses. It's really, you, you end up almost being family with these people because you spend so much time discussing with them that you learn to know them inside out. And then ultimately, it's like somebody, um, like a parent letting go of their children when, you know, they are at a right at the right point in time when they can actually take off alone. Well, that certainly sounds lovely. And I'm sure there will be people watching this and thinking, I've got a great idea. Okay, I finally want to act on it. Now I feel like I can get the right advice. So that's that's an excellent thing to be hearing about. Um, of course, for the majority of startups, it is financing um, that, is the, that is the worry that they will have, how they manage to get around that. Um, so perhaps, Vladimiro, you could tell us a little bit about financing. We've heard about angel investing and there are other opportunities out there. Um, so, so what do startups need to know about that? Okay, I, I would say startups typically start up with their own finances. So someone will have an idea, decide to invest time and his own money, his, her own money, into their idea. In a startup, I think the main differentiating factor is people are investing into something that is still not tangible. You know, it's still something that might happen in the future. And as we all know, you know, very few startups actually succeed uh, in, in, in actually, you know, gr growing to the, to the next level. Um, there are a number of uh, investing um, funding opportunities. I would start with the, the national incentives, which basically there are a number of incentives which are government funded, which enable startups to, you know, to partly fund their, their operations. It could be strange from a, the drafting of a business plan, working on a business plan, uh, funding for employment, Opportunities, so or if you need to grow your team, there are these incentives. Uh, then the next level would be angel, angel investors and venture capitalists. Unfortunately, in the local context, uh, these are still picking up. And even now, there is a bit of a Porsche TU level from on the crowdfunding side. 
angel investors, just to a brief summary, angel investors would typically invest their own money and into this startup, they typically would like the idea and trust or believe in that individual who's promoting that idea. So there is a bit of a connection. And an angel investor would typically monitor quite actively his, his or her investment. So they are participate, they mentor, and are involved in, in, in uh, more actively in, in, in the operation. On the venture capitalist side, on the other hand, there are people who group a number of investors. They are not really investing their own money, but their clients' investments. So they would typically are more after a, a profit, a higher profit, and would typically be not totally inside the operation. So they just put money in and let the, the entrepreneur you know, do, do his own business. So there is, I think, a, a differentiating factor. On the crowdfunding, uh, late last year, there was uh, the EU directive to promote crowdfunding. Locally, it's still picking up. Um, there are a number of, of, of let's call it, uh, bureaucratic uh, you know, uh, solutions to, to go through, hurdles to go through. But I would believe that uh, with, the initi with the various initiatives being undertaken in the startup community, we will eventually catch up with the rest of the world in terms of you know, having angel investors, venture capitalists, and, and uh, crowdfunding. Because, unfortunately, traditionally, banks are, are, do not like the startup community because there is no security, so it's a high risk for them. So typically, banks refuse even to entertain meetings for startups which are still in the ideation stage. Absolutely. Um, well, very exciting there to hear some of the opportunities and also the potential for Malta when it comes to financing. Karen, did you have anything you'd like to add on that topic? Well, Vladimir actually has taken up the full spectrum of the funding. <laughs> however, however, I think what he forgot to mention is perhaps the stock exchange, which is also another medium which one can use in order to finance, to come up with some financing. Um, and then ultimately, it all depends on, on the startup itself. Um, but here at RSM, we have a dedicated team to assist in obtaining the necessary funding and the best funding, which would make sense for the startup we are speaking to. That's great to hear. Okay, well, finally, as we start to wrap up our conversation now, um, I think it's important to address the pitfalls that entrepreneurs could face um, when bringing an idea forward, when they embark on their entrepreneurship journey. So perhaps um, you could just give us your advice on how to avoid those pitfalls. And Fabiana, I'll come to you first. I would say that uh, one of our lessons learned and what we observe from experience is ensuring product slash service market fit. So that there is the experimentation, there is the calibration of the product or the service and the business model behind it to reflect how the market is responding to, to what, you, what the startup is trying to sell ultimately. Absolutely. That is so important, isn't it? Making sure that there is the market fit for the idea that you have. Fantastic. Karen, what about you? I think one of the major pitfalls would be over-enthusiasm. So you have the idea, you know it's there, and sometimes you know there are the numbers which are backing up your idea. And um, it's very often what happens is that unless... You know, you, you need to marry the two, the numbers together with, with the idea. And sometimes what happens is that the numbers perhaps don't make as much sense as much they would like them to be, so the startup would like it to be, and still go ahead. And therefore, you know, ultimately numbers don't lie, and, ultimate, and what will happen is that the startup will not be a success. So I think um, although advisors would, you know, provide the necessary information to assist um, I think that um, the passion sometimes takes over to the extent that they don't listen to what we're, we're, the advisors would actually be telling them to do. Excellent advice, I'm sure. Thank you. And finally, Vladimiro, what would be the pitfalls to avoid on your end? I would tell you what Karen is saying. The, I think we as the partners to, to the startup, we are some, more often than not, we end up giving constructive criticism. And sometimes um, the entrepreneurs are not open to that criticism and, 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 and challenging of the operations, as we've mentioned earlier. So to my mind, uh, the entrepreneur has to be open to the 
challenges go forward because if he has a solid uh, model area, he should be or she should be able to answer, you know, the, the, or, or get some tangible answers into all the, all, all the challenges put forward. Uh, in addition to that, some startups, sometimes we end up not seeing what, what is the end goal in place. So, you know, finally you have an idea and you want to grow it, but what, what, what is your exit strategy? How do you want, do you still want to keep, you know, full control of your company? Do you want, are you ready to let, let go on some of the control of it? That thing, is, that, that, that perspective is sometimes overlooked uh, at the start of, of, of the journey. So it is important that you see where, where you want to be in a period of time to actually cater for it in the setup you're doing, um, you know, to, to achieve your, your ultimate goals. From our end, obviously, as part of the process, and uh, as we were mentioning in earlier, where we challenge, we, we would be posing the right questions to define how best to, to set up your structure and, and going forward. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Vladimiro, and to you as well, Karen and Fabian. Great advice there. Um, to anybody watching who is a startup or perhaps they're in scale-up mode, um, they know there are friendly faces that they can come to, reach out to for great advice and for all the help they need to move their business forward. So thank you so much for being with me on the boardroom today. It was lovely to have you. And to all of you watching at home or in the office, great to have you with us. And I look forward to seeing you next time on the boardroom.